What's up guys, Jordan from Precondo here. Today I want to go through all of the development proposed uh, in Etobicoke, what we're going to see over the next couple of decades, um, and there is a lot. So I'm going to try to get this in one take. It's probably not going to happen, uh, but we're going to do our best here. And if you want to talk to me about any of the developments or pre-construction investing, real estate investing in general, you can do that at precondo.ca slash call. And let's get into this. First up, we are heading to the Humber Bay area, the beautiful Humber Bay area. We're going to head over to Windermere and Lakeshore. So the first project I want to talk about here, by the way, if you haven't seen this model before, blue is under construction. Uh, the pink purple color is proposed and, you know, the gray, uh, yeah, the gray, the shades are the existing buildings. So Mirabella right here um, is a really interesting project from Diamante Development on the uh, north side of Lakeshore in between Lakeshore and Gardner. Just, uh, just directly beside Windermere, uh, 38 stories, two identical buildings, 10 stories um, above uh, a 10 story podium here. And this one is combined, you're looking at 720 units. This one's closing next year. And then directly to the uh, directly to the west of it, you have a proposal from Marlin Spring. Now, initially the proposal was for 26 and 21 stories and it was 21 and 21. And now they're asking for 36 and 21 stories. So. I can't tell you for sure how tall this building is going to be, but what I can tell you is that current proposal is for 607 units combined. Now, if we head up Windermere a little bit, just off Windermere, you have Southport, right? You have Southport Square here. This is a development from uh, State Building Group, um, and they are looking for 26 and 29 stories and 641 units in total and a ton of ground floor retail space. Um, like well over 20,000 square feet. So tons of ground floor retail. So this is awesome because this area does need some retail, even though you're a short, you know, one kilometer walk over to Humber Bay. Okay, so next up, we're going to head over to Humber Bay proper and we get to conservatory site right here called uh, Cove. Um, or sorry, Rot Water's Edge. Cove is this one. So this is Water's Edge by Conservatory Group, 56 stories, 606 units just all along... Um, Lakeshore here. And this one's already under construction. So they're doing the dig now. Then we will head Oh, You know what? Actually, I'll show you this one first. So hard to kind of view here, but this little guy here is actually a hotel proposal. So this is a hotel proposal right along Lakeshore in the Humber Bay area. Looking at 13 stories and 165 rooms. And then directly beside that, we have Vita 1 and Vita 2. So Vita 1 is 53 stories, Vita 2 is 16 stories, so you're looking at 658 units combined. Both are topping off now, uh, you know, you're looking at occupancy next year. Then we have a proposal where the uh, the sales office sits on Marine Parade for uh, conservatory site, the uh, Water's Edge site here. This uh, There's a proposal for a... Um, I don't have much info on this proposal. So all I know is there is a proposal to build here. I'm sure it'll go through. That wasn't going to be a sales center forever, right? And it's right in front of the Jade condos. So it's going to mess with their views a little bit. I'm sure they won't be happy. But of course, this proposal has been in for a long time. So it's no surprise to anybody paying attention. Next up, we have Esso. The Esso site right at Lakeshore and... Um, Lakeshore and Park Lawn, really. So that SO site was recently bought by Marlin Springs. So this is a brand new proposal. Uh, they're seeking 59 stories and 650 units. And then we get to sort of the big ticket item in Humber Bay. And that is the 2150 Lakeshore site. So it's right here. This is uh, from First Capital. So obviously publicly traded company. So it's only a matter of time before this one goes through because you know, they have the finances to make it happen. It's a massive master plan community. You're looking at 15 towers ranging all the way from 28 to 80 stories in total 7,504 residential units of which 80% or sorry, 20% will be required uh, as of current proposal, about 20% will be required to be a CMHC 80% market affordable housing rental unit. And then this plan includes a ton of retail. You're talking over a million square feet of office and retail component, two schools, which is really needed in this community. There's a lot of uh, families in this community. So that's awesome to see. Uh, a shopping gallery, uh, restaurant spaces, a new community center. And sort of the big ticket item for me that I'm looking forward to is the GO station, which will run along the north side of the site. Uh, Humber Bay right now is a very, you know, it's a very car dependent community. So that GO station is really going to bring a lot of value to the neighborhood. So I am excited about that one. Let's scoot on over to 
the Mimico Go. While well, we're talking about Go stations, so Mimico Go is a regeneration area, which means that development proposals can go through a lot easier. It is an, an area that it makes a lot of sense to build density because obviously you're right on transit, you're right on the go here. And so these are really interesting sites to me. We're just over at Royal York and sort of Newcastle area, directly across the street from San Remo. Um, and that's gotta be my favorite joint in Mimico. If you haven't been to San Remo before, you have to go. You can go get a Cafe Crema. It's like uh, an ice cap for civilized folks. Yeah, so this area is, you're seeing a ton of redevelopment. So we'll kind of start, what we'll do is we'll start with the eastmost and we'll head west. So the eastmost site that you have here is Grand Park Village. And this is a proposal from Freed, one of my favorite boutique developers in the city. Um, this one's anything but a boutique, but I'm sure you'll still see that freed flair in this project. And you're looking at four condo buildings from 16 to 32 stories combined, uh, just over 1800 units. And then right here we have 25 oddly, now, 25 oddly is, uh, a proposal in early, early stages here, 25 stories, 385 units. It'll probably get flipped to a name brand developer at some point. Uh, but like I said, very early stages. And that brings us to the Van Dyke site. So the next project we're gonna talk about here is Grand Central Mimico. Uh, three buildings, 12 to, uh, 20, uh, 12 to 37 stories from the north to the south side, 750 units in total. Um, and this was probably the hottest launch of last year. Um, massively oversubscribed, like thousands of buyers uh, for those 751 units. And then we get to another Van Dyke site, just a little further west here. So right here, you have 39 Newcastle, uh, three buildings, 22 to 36 stories, 833 units in total. And then you get to the final site, which is right on top of the Mimico Go. This is, um, what's the address on this one? The address is, I don't know the address, but it's right on the Mimico Go, right along Royal York here. Um, and you're looking at... Uh, 687 units in total, 29 and 44 stories. I'm really excited for this one personally because it's it, it could not be closer to the GO station. You're directly on top of it. So this one's going to have a lot of investor interest. Uh, I'll be really interested in this one myself too, just depending on where price lines up. So now let's rip on up to the Queensway. Lots of action on the Queensway and it's about time. They've got a lot of restaurants. They've got a lot of boutique shops. It's about time we get rid of those cash money scammers and we move in some, some boutique residential. That's what I like to see. So first project just to the east of Royal York is Reina Condos. And this one's by First Capital. Um, it is the first all-female development uh, in Toronto, and the site actually looks really, really good. So kudos to them. They delivered probably the best-looking boutique currently available on the Queensway, one of my favorite sites in the area. And you're looking at 200 units over nine stories. Then we head a little bit further west. You get to Queensway Park, which is almost complete, and directly across the street, we have 801 The Queensway, another Marlin Spring site, 11 stories and 206 units. Heading a little bit further west, we have 859 The Queensway, which is currently under construction. You're looking at 14 stories, 183 units. And then directly beside that, we have 875 The Queensway, and this is by format, 14 stories, 183 units. And then on the north side of these two developments, on the other side of Queensway, you have Casimir Condos, 103 units over eight stories. And then right before we get to Islington, we have one final property to talk about here. We've got 935 The Queensway. This is uh, by Madame Homes, who, if you're not familiar, actually built most of Humber Bay, like the majority of the buildings there. And it's a really good looking building, actually. So it's got a lot of uh, like a step terrace design on the way up above the podium. You're looking at 16 stories, 227 units. And then on the west side of Islington, and you've if you've lost your uh, bearings here, this is the Cineplex, so very easy to remember where we are. You have Verge, so Verge 1 and Verge 2, both from Rio Can. Um, obviously, you know, a commercial developer with very deep pockets. These launches have been uh, very successful. You're looking at two buildings, 17 stories and 11 stories with combined 530 units in total. Now we will head a little bit further west and you'll see IQ condos. Those are the existing buildings. Right in behind IQ, you have a proposal from Remington Group, the same builder as IQ, for IQ condos phase three. We are looking at three buildings in total from 18 stories on the north side, 42 stories on the south side of the site. You're looking at 915 units in total. And then directly across the street, you have 36 Zora, which was like one of the hottest launches I think I've 
I've seen uh, in the past few years. It sold out essentially overnight. This is from All Tree Development. It's currently already well under construction, uh, 35 stories and 460 units there. And then to the north of that site, right along the Queensway, you have another site here from Marlin Spring. This is called The Taylor, mostly sold out, uh, 10 stories and 142 units. Now over to Kipling we go. And then on the north side of the Queensway, right at Kipling, you have an interesting proposal here from Kingset Capital for two buildings, 35 and 24 stories. Really interesting, actually, at the current renders. We'll see if the finished product looks like this. Um, but you're looking at 840 units in total. And then directly to the south of that, you have another site, 1325, the Queensway. This one's from Tribute and Greybrook. Two buildings, 44 and 37 stories, with a combined 1,187 units. Now let's scoot on over to Sherway Mall. So Sherway Mall, if you're familiar, on the south side already has a couple of existing condo buildings. And I've been waiting for when they're going to start adding more, kind of like a mini square one. It's something you're going to see with a lot of con um, old mall sites, etc. In the future, you're going to see gentrification surrounding them. Uh, this site is no different. So this here is a proposal on the north side of, uh, of Sherway, on the north side of the Queensway, from FEMA developments. In total, you're looking at eight buildings, right? And in total, in terms of residential units, 2,135 units. Uh, they also have a bunch of office space and retail space on the ground levels as well. And if you have a car, like the Sherway Junction area is really, really good. I mean, you have the 427, you've got the QEW, you have the Gardener. You can get pretty much anywhere in the city relatively quickly. And sticking with the mall theme here, we'll head up the 427 to Cloverdale Mall. This here is the Cloverdale Mall redevelopment. So this is a proposal from Quadrill. It's a master plan community. Obviously, this will be rolled out in multiple phases to redevelop the Cloverdale Mall area. You're looking at you know over 250,000 square feet of ground floor uh, retail space. And in total across, across these buildings, you're looking at 4,050 residential units as of the latest proposal. And it's a really interesting development and the plan looks uh, really unique to me. So I'm looking forward to this one. And then directly across the street, you have two, the East Mall here. This is also a quadrille site, uh, but it's a separate proposal altogether. You're looking at 32 stories with an eight story podium, uh, 511 units at this site. Now we are heading over to the Kipling Station uh, area. Right at uh, right along Dundas here, you're gonna find a big master plan community from Pinnacle. The blue building to the far left is Cypress Condos. It's the first phase of Pinnacle Etobicoke. It's already done and topping off, taking occupancy relatively soon. But there are eight more proposed buildings for the site as well. The tallest of the eight that are proposed is currently 43 stories. And in total, you're looking at 2,795 units across, uh, across all nine buildings with some ground floor retail space. And this area in general, like the Kipling and the, the Islington subway pockets, are I, I, like great areas, obviously, to build some density because you're right on the subway, but also just in general, you look at the value of resale condos there versus something like Humber Bay, this is a pocket I'm really interested in myself. Then to the north, closer to Kipling Station, to the north off of Bloor, you get to 8 Joplin. This is uh, proposed by Amdev, uh, 33 and 27 stories, 697 units here. And then directly to the to the east of that, you have another proposal from the same developer for 32 stories and 303 units. And then just on the other side of Kipling here, Kipling and Bloor, you have the Etobicoke Civic Center, uh, which is a massive civic, civic center, architecturally pretty unique considering it's a city property. Um, but we're out of my comfort zone. It's not a condo building, so we will move on from there. So moving on from here, we are getting to the Islington subway pocket. So here you've got Bloor, Islington. Obviously, Islington Station is right here. First building we are going to talk about is 25 Maybell. This is a really interesting proposal. Um, 49 stories, 400 and 486 units. Um, and I'll be interested to see if it gets built in final form the way the current renderings look because it's actually a really unique building. I really like uh, the design. It's got some curved, rounded edges. It's... Uh, Kind of unique for the area so we'll see if that one goes through um, and then when you move up a little bit further north from the station you get to cordova here you have two sites from tridel westerly one and westerly two 20 and 27 stories and a combined 612 units across the two uh really interesting sites probably the best two of the best launches over the last few years anyways in terms of just value um i really like the prices uh, tridel came out 
uh, at, at these sites for, and they sold incredibly quickly. Well, well I mean, technically Westerly 2 is selling right now, but you know what I mean? Massively oversubscribed on Westerly 2. And then directly across Cordova, you have a site here from Minto Communities. Uh, this one is 12 Cordova. It's proposed for 24 stories and 325 units. Again, obviously, right on the subway station, great place to build density. Cannot complain with this one bit. We will head a little bit further east down Bloor. We get to Bloor and Montgomery, just on the other side of the river. And you get to 3100 Bloor, another proposal from Tridel here. Now, I wasn't going to include this because it's a boutique. Uh, but look, this one's a looker, man. I really like the design of this building, so I had to include it just on that notion alone. Uh, it's 13 stories, 319 units, and I really hope it gets built as currently proposed. Then we will head a little bit further east over to Royal York, and we will shoot up Royal York into the Kingsway. So right here in the Humbertown shopping sort of area, uh, you have obviously the, uh, the Kingsway here. Um, obviously, these are all going to be boutique luxury products. It's just, you know, the nature of the neighborhood. Uh, the first site we're going to talk about is Edenbridge from Tridel. So Edenbridge is a nine-story, 182-unit building, currently under construction and mostly sold out. Then you have the Humbertown redevelopment from Tridel and First Capital. Then you head up a little bit further up the Kingsway and you get to Benevudo's site, 293 the Kingsway, which again, mostly sold out and also under construction already. Oh, I'm realizing I forgot about the East Mall. So let's whip over there quickly and I will show you what's going on. So first thing I want to talk about in the East Mall is, uh, so we're at uh, the East Mall, right? And Bloor. So this site is currently under demolition. And I'm just realizing we got to get the model updated because this isn't entirely accurate. The first site, which is right here on the north side of Bloor, you have uh, a proposal from Kingset Capital called Valhalla Village. Four buildings up to 37 stories, uh, and you're looking at 1,023 units here in total. And then directly to the north of that, you get Edelkan's Valhalla Town Square following their first successful Valhalla community. Um, you have five buildings here in total. You've got two boutique buildings, the Park Terrace buildings on the east side of the site. And then on the west side of the site, you have the three towers. In total, you're looking at 1,405 residential units at this site here. And finally, we'll whip all the way up the East Mall to Eglinton. So East Mall and Eglinton, you have a new proposal here from none other than Harhe at 900 the East Mall. Really unique building proposal here from Harhe. Obviously, you've got this sort of step design in these twisted buildings. So you have tons of outdoor space, large balconies, terraces, that kind of thing. Uh, four buildings in total uh, in between 20 and 21 stories. You're looking at 836 units in total. Now, like I said at the beginning, guys, this is not all of the developments in Etobicoke, but it is the majority share of anything that's proposed today. I left out some boutiques and some minor developments here and there, um, and there are certainly more on the way, right? So development sites are constantly selling and getting zoned and approved, so there will be more in the future, but this is just what's currently proposed, what's currently available. Uh, if you have any questions about these sites or you want to invest in pre-construction or real estate, go to precondo.ca slash call. I'd be happy to speak with you. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the section below and I will see you guys next video.